Thanks for the love, Kiara. Hey Willow, how's it going? Currently fighting for your life with a uni assignment. I hope my day's gone well. Yeah, not bad. I mean, today's one of my days off. Basically, I was uh, wait, spent uh, a lot of them. Wow. I basically got a um, uh, delivery time, an hour long window for a package I was waiting for. And I sort of like, towards the end of the window, I just got a message saying um, they tried to deliver and no one was in. Which was odd, considering I'd basically been sat near my near a win, uh, the window of my flat, sort of uh, watching the car park. But hey, I'd imagine the, the driver was pretty busy. And to be fair, my flat is kind of hard to find. So I literally had to uh, rush down and pick it up from the p post office before I started. But on the plus side, I made myself some... Um, Sticky uh, chicken wings for lunch. That was nice. And my work started selling a uh, rocket salad, which is my favourite. Like, as in those bags of pre-mixed salad. 
So now it's super easy for me to just have a nice little uh, side dish. I just like to sort of create a bit of a cheese over it. Well, like a uh, not great, you know, shave, I guess, would be the right word. Willow, you've unfortunately had that more than once for deliveries. Yeah. Kind of lucky, really, because I managed to get down to the post office just like. 25 minutes before it closed. Which of course means tomorrow I can uh, just simply um, get home from work, take a nice nap, and you know what, I'm just going to give um, Keeper a quick shout out. So that he's on YouTube, uh, sorry, not YouTube, Twitch as a uh, keen SD. And tomorrow he's uh, going to start streaming a uh, Lancer game, which I'm playing a character in. Oh, <coughs> uh, that's Link's done. I'll just switch this webcam on. And here I am. Not looking my best because I'm kind of sleepy, but. Oh, hey, Nerlis, how's it going? Uh, Nola's typing in the style of his fan troll, which I can barely read because the number seven basically replaces everything. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, very hyped for that Lance campaign. Is this not time the time for terrible fan troll quirks in? Also, hi. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, I think that's going to be like 8.30. So for those who uh, are British summertime, which is going to be, uh, what, it's uh, like 10 past 6 here. So I guess like um, two and a half hours from now. Oh yeah, so I, for my character, well, camera's up here. For my uh, character, I've got these shiny new uh, blue translucent dice. So of Lancer, you basically need a D20 and some um, D6s. But yeah, we're here for Pikmin, so let's get to that. <coughs> the Lance VOD is going to be put somewhere? That is a very good question. I know Keith's probably going to leave it up on his channel, but I don't know if he's uh, putting the VOD anywhere. Oh yeah, I'll just make a little switchy switch. And plug my headphones in. off into the microphone because my lungs are still extremely irritated. <coughs> oh yes, yeah, so something cool I've uh, learned recently is that the uh, new Life is Strange game has a prominent transgender woman, well, has a transgender woman as a, one of the uh, prominent characters. Which is pretty cool. <coughs> like, True Colours. <coughs> sorry. Uh, True Colours had a. Um, basically, I think Steph, who was a pretty major character, one of the love interests, had a transgender ex who um, appeared in basically one um, of the um, recordings you can find, and that's it. And obviously, there was a lot of people who were sort of. Um, interpreting characters from the original games as trans <coughs> as often has to be done because there's recall in the way of trans characters. Now Liz, you forgot how many letters you replaced seven with, especially at the worst of it. You remember T and I, but then went, oh yeah, when you really wanted to be 
unintelligible, which is... I think it's unintelligible anyway. It's mostly sevens. You added an L and could have sworn there was a secret four thing too. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about, um, you know, the fan fandoms where uh, there are specific rules for things. Sometimes it just got out of hand. Like all of the Sailor Moon fanfics about Sailor Earth. <coughs> well, anywho, uh, the Valley of Repose and Awakening Wood <coughs> have been 100% cleared. So, perplexing pool. Uh, we've got the shower room and we've got Glutton's Kitchen. <coughs> Because of the accursed bread bugs, I um, kind of missed um, one treasure in Glutton's kitchen. So what I shall have to do is go back in and uh, retrieve it. Anyways, uh, let's see. So shower room is over here. So what we're going to need to do is see if the bridge is... Oh yeah, I forgot we just uh, basically got rid of all the water here. So we can now come and glow as we please. So we're just going to have a look over here and see what we need. Fire, water, electric and poison. Basically everything then. And the other thing I want to do is basically... Uh, see about getting some more. Ah, these motherfrickers. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, I vaguely recall there was somewhere I could harvest uh, berries from around here, so I'm just going to check there. Oh, here we are. Oh. Spin, spin, spin. No list, that was it, because getting three sevens in a row was a jackpot. Oh, okay. That does actually make sense. Of course, whenever I hear of a character who um, likes saying jackpot, I think of a Devil May Cry. Now, the thing about Devil May Cry is that has got to be one of the most um, accurate portrayals of a sibling relationship in any work of fiction. Wait, get back here, you little blighter. We can eat later. Icky! It's indeed Brie. And it is thee. Okay. Oh yeah, so um, I've been meaning to try and catch your Parasite Eve streams, but I keep missing them. How are they going? <coughs> I 
Nellis, your impression of Devil May Cry is that it's of its time, whereas time was precisely two seconds on one particular day and one of the years between 1990 and 2004. But you don't know of what years. You know what, that's actually very fair. Either you've hecked up your build or the game's um, had a sudden difficulty spike. In fact, I know what I'll do. Put some of you back. And the yellow Pikmin can have their day. Yeah, I'm pretty sure um, Parasite Eve was kind of notorious <coughs> for being um, having a sudden difficulty spike, but I might be wrong. No, less, it was definitely very cool to someone at one point, and maybe even you, but you're not exposed to it at the exact point in your life where you've been, you've been into it, so now it just feels grainy to look at. Yeah, I mean, the original Devil May Cry is kind of clunky in places. I still have a sort of a soft spot for it. Like, to be fair, Devil May Cry sort of five really uh, sort of develops the formula in a way that sort of, uh, kind of makes sense in that Dante is sort of a lot older and he's just sort of um, <coughs> basically they introduced a younger character and made Dante sort of realistically what we, how you'd expect someone who was that kind of super cool um characters who have aged. He has that kind of um, old ro older rock star look going. Oh yeah, so we're going to try and um, fight this thing. Nellis, maybe you got Titan AE instead because it was the right time for both of them, but you only got the one. Hmm, maybe. Like, I mean, I'd, I'd say I defend Titan AE, but to be fair, I also defend the Final Fantasy movie. And, you know, I like Ch I actually kind of like Chadley in Final Fantasy VII remake, so maybe I'm just sick in the head.
Anyway, it's... Icky, one of those is unforgivable. Look, if you've got a problem with Comrade Chadley, you've got a problem with me. He is right or die. Zero views. I'm joking. Oh, yeah, so one thing I've been sort of, um, ruminating on lately is uh the way a lot of um trans people um who well it's like a sort of dissonance between the way um trans people write tra trans characters <laughs> i love how occasionally uh, one of the pikmin will trip over it's so adorable is there a difference between how trans people will write trans characters and how um cis people write trans characters No, unless you don't know who Chadley is. Basically like a, um... Imagine Data, if Data and Wesley were the same character. In Star Trek. You've never watched Star Trek. Okay, imagine... You know who Wesley is by reputation, though. But not Data. There's no justice in this world. Okay, so you know, sort of know them both by reputation. Proto Janet. Yeah, I guess Janet's got sort of some elements of uh, Data. In Futurama, there's a joke where um, Bender says, Sometimes I don't have emotions, and that makes me sad. And that's basically a direct parody of um, Data. Although, to be fair, it was also a direct parody of Spock. Yeah, so basically... Yellow Pikmin are the most important Pikmin, just because um, electric hazards will instant kill anything that hits that they hit. Oh, it's coming! Get him! Good job. Like anything else, like if they're set on fire, if they're exposed to water, and uh, the Pikmin just uh, run around and scream. But electricity? Pshht. No less relatable though, off and going. Feels like I should be feeling something here, and I'm not. 
yeah. Like, I was sort of a kid at, around the era where, you know, and I was diagnosed with ASD around the time where uh, the understanding was that we don't have emotions rather than we simply have different emotions. Okay. Hey there. Oh no! Oh no! This was a not an acceptable outcome. Okay, I've lost like 12 Pikmin. Is that worth it? Hmm. I mean, we're pretty early on. I could restart this floor. Oh wow, I lost a lot of the white Pikmin. And I'll need those to dig up treasure, so... <sighs> yeah, we'll just start this again. Exactly, Nellis. 30 seconds ago, we started this expedition with a hundred of the finest Pikmin. Now only 80 remain. Yep, sometimes I feel dysphoric about my voice. Sometimes I can just do a perfect enhancer voice. Oh yeah, I was saying um, when we started, like I've recently discovered um, one of the main characters, uh, well not like one of the important characters in uh, the New Life is Strange game is a uh, trans woman. And they actually uh, sort of gave her, well, she's clearly actually voiced by a trans woman. They're not going for like a perfect passing voice. Which is pretty cool. <coughs> and I, I mean, I was, well, going back to what I've been saying recently, um, I've been thinking there's a really significant difference to the way uh, sort of a, a trans person writes a trans character compared to a cis character. But the thing is, um, whenever, this means whenever a sort of a trans character, like, if, well, I'm speaking as a trans woman, so I guess I'll say trans woman specifically. But whenever, whenever you have it like a trans woman who's written in a way that um, an actual trans woman who knows other trans women would recognise as a trans person. Sorry, uh, you know, you just, um, like, you get a bunch of uh, cis people who insist they must be, um, they must be cis, or, like, one phrase I really find annoying is, oh, they just treat as a woman to me. Like, well-intentioned, but immensely frustrating to hear. And... Um, I've actually sort of been kind of thinking about it because um it's okay i'm missing a pikmin but where oh there you are i've actually been sort of thinking about it because i'll be honest i have never played a cis tabletop rpg character in my life 
And I don't intend to start. And I've been sort of kind of thinking, um, like, because um, obviously the character in Ke I've uh, <coughs> rolled in Keith's um, Lancer campaign is um, obviously trans. I've actually been kind of sort of thinking about whether or not she she's going to be recognisably so. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've got the backstory there. And I don't know. I think it'll sort of come up plot-wise, but... Like... I've just been sort of thinking about how do I make it clear she's trans without being stereotypical about it, but on the other hand, how do I make it obvious she's trans with cis audience without try having to invoke stereotypes that just, quite frankly, don't apply? I mean, another thing I've been seeing on social media is um, people have been talking about if, uh, you know, like, the trans community has its stereotypes of trans p people. And there's been sort of discourse over uh, if they're problematic. But the thing is, as everyone as that was quickly pointed out, is um, the average, um, you know, sort of right-wing right jerk stereotypical idea of a trans woman isn't... Um, a programmer wearing um, striped socks. It's um. Ah! Okay, that's salvageable, but. Okay. Six. I'll deal. I can deal with. I'm not happy about it, but I can deal with. Exactly. Insist. It's like... Karlak is sort of very, uh, sort of, um... Transcoded. Like, her, her voice actor is actually, um, non-binary and has talked about it. Talked about... Sort of playing him... That way. But, like, you just get a... Whenever I, you know... You just get a lot of cis people being smugly being like, "Oh, so you're saying that she has to be tra she must be trans because she's muscled?" And like, no, that's not it. That's not remotely it. Name: Divine Cooking Tool. Like. I mean, a lot of it's really, um, obviously the whole, um, situation she's got with her. <coughs> oh, it's kind of hard to explain, but, you know, exactly, well, I recognise her own, it's often quite tough to explain why to people that are out of the loop. Icky, so to be honest, you're out of the convo at, so you're saying a thing that wasn't even remotely said. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, not all cis people would say stuff like that, but. <coughs> it's kind of like on TV tropes, sort of, um, occasionally you'll get someone who, uh, just rolls into the comments and says, oh, they're just, um, people are just putting, well, there's a TV trope called, um, trans audience interpretation, which is just an audience reaction trope for people, um, yeah, well, when the audience interprets someone, a character as <coughs> trans, And I'll just uh, rock in and roll into the sort of like the discussion or something and be like, oh, everyone on here is just um, gender and unconforming and being pigeonholed as trans and like, no, there's not actually a single example of that. And they're just basically preemptively making that complaint. Well, 
which about sums up the state of, um, you know, because um, there isn't a lot of trans representation in media at full stop. Uh, trans people basically have to find representation where we can, and sometimes that means a lot of interpreting characters that were never written as trans as such. But there's a lot of complexity to why I am, so someone will interpret her character that way. Yeah, same uh, with other marginalized community nerdless. But it's a little different because, well, maybe uh, sort of um, with any sort of queerness. I mean, I know um, obviously a lot of people of colour have had to deal with um, a lot of um, bullshit with sort of animes that have um, characters who are sort of dark skinned, but nothing ha really specific about them or are uh, sort of have obviously an anime style is uh, kind of ambiguous in the first place I need to remember that if I drop Pikmin on them they die instantly oh Okay, looks like the only treasure to be found is over there, where the monsters are. Great. Nolis, you think people of colour claiming Piccolo has always come to mind when you think about this? Oh yeah, that, that was pretty much the example I was thinking of, to be honest. They love how terrifying they get. Uh, terrifying they make the poison vent sound. Like they just have that ominous roar to them. <coughs> oh yeah, and data for autistic folk. And of course, uh, speaking of, um... Ah, no! <coughs> Let's resume. Yeah. Oh yeah, thing is, uh, quite a lot of um, sort of characters who uh, get headcanoned as trans do also have some stereotypical um, sort of um, things about them, like uh, Jessie from Control. There's like a lot of very uh, complicated, nuanced trans headcanons about her, but you know, you uh, whenever they come up, someone you'll always get that one guy who's like, oh, you just think she's. Uh, you just think she's trans because she's kind of, um, mask. Or but You think she's trans because she's kind of butch. Or what have you. And, yeah. Maybe I should really sort of think about how, sir... <coughs> explain the sort of the trans experience in the sort of ways that cis people can sort of understand it. Although that would mean sort of very much interrogating why I sort of headcan the character as trans. <gasps> Jellyfish! <coughs> Hmm. 
But yeah, going back to what I was saying, the uh, trans character in the new Life is Strange seems very cool. I haven't picked the game up yet, but... Oui. Oh, this will be an interesting one. Good work, guys. See you in a bit, Willie. Yeah, she's um explicitly a lesbian, which is very cool indeed. Like one of the other characters is um her wife. Nolas sounds a lot of an effort to answer questions that in many cases aren't being asked with any interest in hearing an answer. On the other hand, useful to them as well. Yeah, I mean, think, I think my goal would be to try and uh, sort of um, grok how we can have a tra uh, trans characters. Who are, you know, the cis can actually recognise as trans. Maybe we'll never know, but oh, I do not like the vibe of that creature. Is it electric? It looks kind of electric. Okay, maybe it's benevolent. Either way, we're getting away of this battery. Like, I mean, I could tell you the reason why um, a lot of um, sort of uh, trans communities internal stereotypes exist. People like, um, well, a lot of trans people like um, Fallout New Vegas because one, it's actually a series, you know, the Fallout series has actually had a lot of uh, queer representation. Like, Fallout New Vegas alone is the first place I saw an explicitly gay or le and lesbian character. Although, unfortunately, it turned, apparently, um, Arcade Va Ganon's voice actors turned out to be a bit of a piece of. Oh, yeah. Durable energy cell. A bit of a piece of. And f okay, so I can avoid that bit friend there quite handily. So what we're going to do is we're just going to skirt this way. No, no, it might be that the best way to do that is have them talk about being dysphoric at length. Like you forget, but something about holistics only recognising the signs of an autistic person having a bad day. That's true. Uh, you know, actually, I don't know if anyone follows, has been watching The Amazing Digital Circus, but there is a very explicitly non-binary character, and like the showrunner is a trans woman, uh, who, um in the most recent episode did have an entire thing about talking about being dysphoric without mentioning the word dysphoric because the whole premise is that they're all trapped in a computer simulation and their body is basically a sort of a mod podge thing the idea being that the ai that runs the place thought they could uh, just build a body they want which is you know feels a lot like <coughs> being um dysphoric especially when transition you aren't exactly sure how you want to transition. Oh no, it's doing something. Okay, it's not a friend. It needs to die.
I can't believe it tried to steal my Pikmin. My precious valuable Pikmin. Okay, I should probably do something about these. Now, the real question, if I have the Pikmin carry away this treasure, will they avoid this sleeping enemy? So yeah, I guess uh, having my character talk about being dysphoric is probably a good way to go about it. Oh, no, we're not going that way just yet. Okay, so here's the plan. Gotcha. It was a good plan. Name, Sud Generator. That was my nickname in high school. Okay, so that's this level thoroughly detreasured, so let's get going. Hello, activating the tiefling smirk. Also, welcome back. Yeah, I should think about having more sort of um, interactive uh, redeems. <coughs> Holy guacamole. Nolis, given the amount of quotes I have about sub energy, you have to doubt that. A uh, sub generator, Nolis, not sub generator. <coughs> Name Mirrored Stage. Okay, and I'm going to stop them approaching that egg because I imagine they'll get, get squished. Aha, I knew it. those frogs so much. <coughs> Willow, always be careful when approaching eggs. Exactly.
cursed jellyfish. Lotus, spoken like a true Englishwoman. Not. I see what you did there, yeah. And yes, I am English, sadly. I mean, I'd I do usually prefer to say British, but... Okay. Looks like this one's for the water Pikmin. Okay, we still got 21 blue Pikmins left in the party. Thank you for the quote, Tiki. Ah! No! <coughs> okay, there's nothing this way. Great. I lost good Pikmin for nothing. Those motherfuckers. Pardon my French. Name, Scrumptious Shell. Icky. <coughs> Whereas you're reluctantly British, no offence to anyone present, but Westminster, you know, fair and valid. Release my Pikmin. We're getting out of here. <coughs> well, eh? Westminster. Derogatory. No less. Is there an Eastminster? Uh, no. Westminster's basically the name of uh, the uh, building parliament's held in. I'd imagine there might have been uh, an East Minister counterpart. Vorpal Platter. <coughs> okay. 
that's everything. So we're just going to make a run for the exit. Icky lives... Wait, so... Oh, no. What Icky means is, um... Westminster's the seat of the British government. So, um... When, um... Someone who's Scottish, Welsh or Irish wishes to complain about... Specific specifically the uh, British government, they'll say Westminster. As opposed to Holyrood, the uh, seat of the Scottish Parliament. Um, or, um... <coughs> well, Wales has the Senate, which is literally just Welsh for the Senate. Um, it's both, it's the building, but it's used as a synodoke, sorry, synodoke for the, um, entire government. Oh, and here the go government usually means the, uh, specifically the Prime Minister and his cabinet, not the, uh, bureaucracy, which, uh, doesn't really sort of, uh, get elected and just works for whoever's in charge. Lots of tubes in here. <gasps> Butterflies! I'm gonna catch them. What? Guys, no, that's not safe. Okay, off they go. Okay, so which ones do we need more of? I suppose we're quite low on uh, blue. Yeah, exactly. It's literally uh, Skyrim rules. See a pretty butterfly? Turn it into... Whoops. Messed that up. potions. No, there's some healing and you don't remember the fortify conjuration, probably. Yeah, I can't remember, really. Oh, hey, we're back. A dinosaur's tail. <sighs> okay. <coughs> oh, that's a boss arena if I've ever seen one. Okay, that looks like an exit. Oh, that looks like the next point to the next level, but yeah, there's treasure around here, so let's get exploring. Oh, more flowers, pretty flowers. Okay, so I could do with some more red or some more electric. I'll take red because they're the more uh, universal sort. Oh, looks like it's blue after all. My bad. Oh well, at least we're back to 100. Notice the unfortunate wearback curse to only turn around during full moon. <laughs> There's water in there. <laughs> the noise the Pikmin make is so adorable.
Okay, a maple leaf. Canada represent, I guess. Yep, so there's the exit. Exactly, well, they are a bunch of cuties. Yeah, I really should consider um, trying to do a uh, Pikmin related, sort of a Pikmin prosthetic cosplay, just because I can. I mean, look at these guys. I don't know how I'd hide my nose, but. Okay, what have we got through here? There's something around here. <coughs> well, oh, you're full in on me doing a Pikmin cosplay. Yeah. I've actually been sort of thinking about how I can do the head, do a headpiece. Because I could do a full-on bowl camp, but I've never done one of those before. Okay, that's all the treasure in the area then. I mean, I could just buy a bold cap, but though that it's like 20 quid. And that... Wow, that's quite a bit of money. Just for one thing. And like, they're not really reusable. So I might actually consider making my own sort of... cap for it. But then that's going to take a long time. So it might not... Um, so it might be something that um, I wear after I've finished cos- um, that <coughs> fin <coughs> Sorry, a bit of a coughing fit there. Finish streaming this game. Nola's gonna have a nap. You stayed up late and you're supposed to finish a game of betrayal at House on the Hill with family in a couple of hours. We're at like, you're at like five, five omens and haven't started the haunt yet. Ah, fair. Rest well then. Oh, hello. What have we got here? Oh. Looks like I'm being uh, told I might need some uh, <coughs> purple Pikmin, so... Exactly, Willow. We're getting the full rainbow. I think I've, I've already shown it off, but there is actually a cute little Easter egg where they'll start singing the original game's theme tune if you um, have a perfect ratio of all the available Pikmin colours. Oh, I hear one of those motherfucking frogs. You... You remember me uh, showing you? Oh, excellent. Yeah, really should have got round to clipping it. Oh! Flapjacks.
Okay, I got it. Stop lying down in the job. Kibi! Thanks for the jump scare. How, uh, was whatever you're streaming? Alright, yeah, Nervous has gone for a nap. I'll give you a shout out myself. Icky must be a hell of a game if it's caused two motherfuckers in one stream. Yeah, I think because of the um, after effects of the cold and because I'm a bit short on sleep, I'm uh, a bit sweary than usual today, so sorry about that. What are you playing? Destiny 2 level grinding? Heck yeah. Right, let's get to this. Kibi <coughs> went well. Ended up getting everything you could reasonably get done that you wanted to get done. So you ended early. Figured it would be fitting to raid here since you recently played this too. Oh, I didn't know you'd been streaming um, Pikmin. Happiness emblem. Okay, let's grab this and go. If I'm lucky, I won't have to deal with that frog. Well, no, the juice is worth the squeeze. Exactly. Okay, I could have more of my Pikmin carrying, so. Kibi, you started last month, got the credits, took a break <coughs> for a couple of weekends, and got 100% the weekend before last. Ah, fair enough. I mean, I got to the post game after the credits, I guess, last week, the week before last. So I'm going for the, um, oh, merciless extractor. Oh, I see what you did there, Willow. Is that treasure then? When you say 100%, you mean 100% treasures. 100% can be a variety of things. This is true. Okay, looks like I'm going to have to kill them all. You accursed puffy blowhog, you. Oh no.
Oh no, no! That was a steep cost. Okay, what have I got? Okay. Wow, I lost a lot of red Pikmin to that one. Rescued. Wow, that scared the heck out of me. Okay, so I need to throw a load of blues up there. they got to. Okay, there's one. Oh no. I messed up, I messed up, I messed up. I thought the blues would, yep. The blue should have lifeguarded them, but then I realised they were trying to lift the thing. I'm so sorry. Oh, there they are. <coughs> Wait, why didn't you lifeguard? No, no. <sighs> I can't put this on them. They did their best. Poor things were stuck in the deep end. Yeah. Permanent container. Hmm. ICC. I think we have that brand here. Okay, and that's all the treasure. <coughs> Time to 
Enchant of a moose, then. Good lord, I hate those puffy blowhogs so much. Like, the thing is, they don't do any damage, but they knock your Pikmin a long way away, potentially into a hazard. And, uh, and they uh, automatically destroy flowers. Which, aside from um, representing a Pikmin's efficiency, is basically their health bar. So it's kind of like a whole um, reduce you to 1 HP deal. How many rooms are here, I wonder? Uh, levels, rather. Oh, wow. Okay, we have some white flowers, so we can uh, recover a few more white Pikmin if we need them. What our ratio is looking like. Well, to be fair, we have a disproportionate amount of uh, blue Pikmin, so... Oh yeah, so yeah, another ape, uh, another sort of game that I can remember having a pretty decent trans character in it is um, Apex Legends, which sort of went the route of, oh, oh no, 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 away, away. We're leaving this to the specialist. No! No! Oh, okay. We're starting this level again. Damn frogs. Why wouldn't they just let me live? What was I saying? Oh yeah, so Apex Legends had a, um, well, it's, I think it's probably one of the first mainstream games that had a very prominent uh, trans femme character in its roster. Like, thinking about it, uh, I think um, Overwatch introduced an unbinary character sort of a while back, and I think the uh, sort of user base promptly um, turned misgendering them into a meme, so... Yeah, glad I washed my hands of that. But yeah, what made me think of Apex Legends was when the game first came out, which to be fair, aside from hearing they had a trans character, who is genuinely cool by the way, like definitely an example of uh, what I said before about um, a trans character where, <coughs> well a trans woman where uh, clearly trans women were consulted. Because she's like a witchy punk sort of person. Who's really into crystals. Which is technically sort of being into STEM. But like, it's sort of like science-y. It's science, but it looks kind of magic-y. But yeah, the reason I was bringing this up is because when the game first came out, uh, there was a sort of a joke that the only uh, white guy in it was toxic. 
because he was his thing was basically being a mad scientist guy who um specialized in poison gas. Ah! Why'd you do this? Oh, great. I demand you put me down at once. Oh, no, you don't. Anyways, we're going to ambush the sleeping monster with purple Pikmin. Is there even anything behind this barrier? Run, run! Okay, ten Pikmin, but at least the frog's defeated. Name, Behemoth Jaw. Okay, there's the exit. Might as well let do something about this before we continue. No nickname for that one, eh? I mean... <coughs> you know, Bear Moth Jaw sounds like a Final Fantasy boss. Just saying. Bright summer. Plentiful tank. That was my nickname in high school. this treasure but <coughs> okay it's this way oh you got left behind <coughs> okay 
Okay, let's proceed. Oh no! Run! Okay, what we're going to do is I'm going to have everyone wait over there and I'm going to suss out if there are any uh, more hidden bombs. I hear you. Show yourself. Giant rubber duck? Sure, why not? Oh no! Oh, I guess it. The weevils are going to try and steal them. Well, tough. I've got it. Oh yeah. So obviously the weevils AI is that they uh, avoid you mostly, but if there's any treasure they'll come out and try and steal it for a disguise. So I guess that was sort of like a gauntlet. Name, Rubber Ugly. Aww, I love you duck. Okay. And we're done here, so let's get the heck out of here. Level seven. Oh, and this is the final floor. Oh, hello there. Okay, so that way leads the boss. The boss music's playing. Hmm. Huh. Intriguing. Okay, that felt unfair. Oh well. Okay, ate a big chunk of uh, white Pikmin. So there's that. Ooh. 
Oh, I get it. I need to distract it. So the red one's which one it's it spotted. Okay, can it get in beyond the arena? Hmm. I'm not entirely sure what to do here. Wait, I know. So there, it seems to be, um... Drawn specifically towards Captain, so. How the hell can it tell who's in charge?
Okay, so. You take half. You take half. Gotcha. Almost there. Gotcha. <sighs> that was intense. Processing. How old? The gooey creature dissolved, leaving this curious item behind. It appears to be coated in slime. Are you sure you want to collect this? Absolutely sure. You'll toss just about anything in my hold. It would be nice if you cleaned occasionally. Well. To the victor, the spoils. So all the boss items tend to give you some new ability, so... Name. Amplified Amplifier. This shape is well suited for the emission and amplification of sound waves. A moment, please. I shall use this as the final part of my in new sound equipment. The Mega Tweeter is done. Captain Olimar, this device has increased the acoustic range of your whistle. Oh then. Ooh. Oh, not much else to do now, but leave. <coughs> what are we up to? An hour and uh, 45 minutes. Oh, I think I uh, will uh, end the day there and I'll uh, finish the stream. Because obviously I have work first thing and oh thanks for the posture check, Willow. 
obviously tomorrow is the start of a uh, well completely new campaign <coughs> and i wouldn't want to be tired for that now would i I agree. Nice little upgrade, Willow. <coughs> well, let's just salute the Pikmin we lost along the way. Oof. 55. Not my worst dungeon dive, but pretty brutal. <coughs> okay, and back to the perplexing pool. So yeah, uh, there's still that one treasure left in um, one of them. Oh yeah, Glutton's Kitchen. Yeah, exactly. 55 heroes. <coughs> Have you noticed that trend well there's that trend of um sort of games that are basically about sort of team games where you um have to sort of go in to a planet or what have you and uh basically re retrieve stuff and that is basically playing pikmin as a pikmin instead of a captain <coughs> Then again, I suppose quite a lot of multiplayer games, you know, like including like Phasmophobia and the like, are basically um, Pikmin in that you're playing as a completely disposable and very much at risk of dying person. So I suppose that from that perspective, um, <coughs> what's it called? The um, kind of ironic, super jingoistic shooter. It's on the tip of my tongue. Sort of like a Warhammer 40k meets Americana aesthetic. <coughs> Hell Divers 2, that was it. I've been getting a ton of mail from a strange person selling cut price, sorry, selling designer items at cut pri rate prices. It sounds like a deal. Should I send them your bonus check? Okay, let's look at some new creatures then. Lesser spotted jelly float. Cephalus dotalum, the dotalium, jelly float family. This native jelly float is indigenous to the region. Unfortunately, it is currently endangered as its habitat is being overwhelmed by ho a hostile immigrant species. Whoops, and I just uh, started killing them mercilessly. Well, oh, jelly floats are as cool as hell. Yeah, I uh, love their design. <coughs> don't love that they keep sucking my pikmin up but create a spotted jelly float cephalus vortexia jelly float family vivid pink coloration is the most noticeable characteristic of this floating life form this immigrant species is not native to the region having appeared to recently have arrived on wind currents the luminescent organ in its head attracts prey which is then sucked out and consumes with its lower orifice Unlike jellyfish, the jellyfoot's tentacles do not have neocyte nematocytes, so there is no danger in touching them. Another day, another boss creature. Raging Bloister. Sorry, Ranging Bloister. 
raging, ranging bloister. Molluscid predatoria, mollusking family. This species of mollusk has shed its shell through the process of evolution. What appears as a flower shaped protrusion on its back actually functions as its gills. The ranging bloister ensnares small animals with its sticky tentacles, reels them in, and consumes them. Observers notice this creature exhibits a keen interest in flashing objects. It often tries to capture and ingest these objects. Researchers and explorers equipped with flashing identification beacons should be wary when in close proximity to this dangerous predator. Oh, I get it. It was reacting to um, the uh, flashing light showing which um, <coughs> captain you're controlling. Okay, I'm missing out on a yellow one. Okay, and treasure. You have collected the modern amenities series. Advanced technology or worthless junk? You have collected the odd logo series. Indecipherable symbols are all the rage these days. You've collected the Explorer's Friends series. Everyone has friends, except for spaceships. Ah, oh, poor spaceship. Okay, I guess we'll read off all this stuff and uh, then I'll call the stream. Amplified Amplifier. Today we searched a deep underground structure that was completely covered in tile. I have no idea what it was originally intended for, but I decided to call it the Share Room. Deep within, I clashed with a sleek bug that copped up this chronical curiosity. Arboreal, uh, arboreal flippery. The lit ship seems to think this leaf would be a smash hit among naturalist interior designers. I just think it looks and feels like a soft blanket. In the interest of scientific discovery, I'd better give it a test run. Scrumptious shell. I've encountered all kinds of grotesque, inedible creatures on this strange planet. However, there's an area in the perplexing pool region that's chock full of tasty critters. Man has his priorities in order. Vorpal platter. The monomolecular edge of this disastrous platter is sharp enough to split subatomic particles. I found it deep in an underground complex covered with slippery ceramic tiles. I learned that I can blow my whistle by pressing B to save my Pikmin from being burnt, drowned, or poisoned. Merciless Extractor. When I look at the president, I can't see myself climbing the corporate ladder. To be a manager, you've got to be an inhuman, heartless villain. This trait allows them to flog their dedicated workers without mercy and still sleep at night. I feel that the same merciless cruelty radiating from this metallic altar. I wonder if it was once used for dark, unspeakable ceremonies. Or perhaps it was once the desk of a corporate boss. We'll never know. Divine cooking tool. Hokitate noodles every single day. Boy, I'm growing tired of them. I did try and be creative at cooking once before, but there are some things that are better left forgotten. Sud generator. I found a weird item today. Wetting the surface produces an endless froth of bu bubbles. It's amusing, but will take further investigation to determine its practical use. It may take a young and playful mind to unlock its secrets. When I return home, I think I'll show it to my kids. Mirrored stage. Every day, it's nothing but work, work, work. Sometimes I need to just get it off my mind, so I set this thing up as a stage and taught the Pikmin a song and dance routine. Red, purple, white, yellow and blue Pikmin danced in the perfect unison and sang their little hearts out. When I return home, I should take up Akura as a dance instructor. Okay, that is adorable. <coughs> Bear Moth Jaw. I can't conceive how a creature with teeth this big could ever have lived. Emperor Bulbax, that bloated meat whale, is the only creature I've seen even half that size. 
The only thing I can do is hope I never encounter something that massive. Okay, charming. Durable energy cell. This cryptic item exhibits an unbelievable quantity of stored dormant energy. <coughs> the civilization that created it must have advanced tremendously when it discovered this powerful energy source. If I were to take, to take this technology back home, how would it affect the future of Hokotate? Permanent container. When I see a closed container, I cannot help myself. I feel like I must open it and see what's inside. But when opening it, it could lose its value. I guess I'll just have to use my imagination. Plentiful tank. The scale of objects found on this planet is overwhelming. I am sheer drowned in it. What if instead of for the company I brought this back for my family? That would buy us so much food. Oh, I shouldn't really think about that. Happiness emblem. When you grow up and get a job, your time doesn't belong to you anymore. To make up for that, you had to learn to appreciate the simple pleasures in life. Looking at this pattern we found today makes me feel a little less miserable. This is today's simple pleasure. Ooh. Oh, hey, right, sister. How's it going? Yeah. I'll just give you a quick shout out. Thank you for the luck. I uh, saw you were doing a couple of streams the other day, but unfortunately it was uh, late at night for me. So I didn't catch him. Hope it's going well, though. Ooh, wrong button. It's another day in the neighbourhood. Hope I'm well. Yep, pretty much. <coughs> Still dealing with the aftermath of a bit of a cough, but... Pikmin 2 has been a nice chill time um, after streaming in Alex Madness Returns. Okay, so I guess it's on to the uh, sales pitches. Hypnotic Plasa. This bizarre insignia on the serrated plasa inspires inexplicable feelings of pleasure that can only be replicated by a long, cool drink. Or so I'm told. You've been lucky in my Pikmin streams. Very chill. How oh, cool. I mean, aside from when I lose loads and loads of Pikmin. That's kind of sad. Choose your own uh, happiness emblem. Choose your own happiness. Find the good things in each day. Maintain a positive attitude and good things will come your way. That is what one feels when viewing this cheerful emblem. Abstract masterpiece. This is something that machines cannot comprehend. The heart of art, the soul of creativity. If you understand the appeal of this design, your heart and senses are at space pilot level. Pondering e emblem. One glance and you'll sit for hours trying to decipher the ultimate purpose of this item. Therein lies its value. It is actually a guide to the world of deep thinking. This area's esoteric design will make viewers want to get up and move for no apparent reason. This is perfect for people who want to diet but can never seem to get started. That reminds me, I need to get some uh, sort, sort of more suitable walking boots. Quenching emblem. An odd symbol that causes first cravings in all who view it. Its secrets cannot be deciphered. Drought ender. Gulp, gulp, gulp. Ah. Give in to your primal feelings and drink to your heart's content. Gaze upon this design and your throat will ache for satisfaction. Why is that? Tell me, please. It is just an co unfortunate coincidence that this item was in a, an area called uh, Awakening Wood. <coughs> Spherical Atlas. The surface designs in this item are the map of a savage planet. This alone makes it valuable. But that is not all. Embedded within is a microchip filled with secret, incredibly detailed data. With this item, you'll know everything about this, that, and the other thing too. Geographic projection. 
If you have both pieces, does the value increase? Do you want it? Need it? Crave it? You should. This is the ultimate storehouse of geographic data in the known universe. Prototype detector. In this miracle, is this a miracle gadget born of universal desire? Or a machine manufactured by the master of Dimension X? Whatever it is, it reacts to treasure. I am so interesting factoid. This was actually um, one of Nintendo's earliest products. They love the te tester. Five-man knapsack. Do you want to nap in luxury like a feudal lord? This lifestyle assistant will help you do it. Tess and our employees were very positive. Their bizarre dreams were an added bonus. Brute knuckles. In a plume of flames, this steel fist flies and smashes its target to bits. But the recall is severe. Captain Olimar suffers some shoulder pain, so he uses it without the rocket booster. Redundant appendage. Sorry, repugnant appendage. Is this the remains of some giant creature? Its colour is striking, but its stench is horrific. Could it be dangerous? The true essence of things in the natural world is very often disguised. Be fall and die, fall or be killed. This is the law of survival. A rule of nature, if, it, if you will. Still a orb. Well, it's okay. This tanning machine is based on primitive science principles. Come, you pallid recluses and sun-starved hermits. You too can have a stealth, healthy, stylish glow. Forged Courage. A heat-resistant alloy forged in the fires of justice and passion. Wear it and feel courage's burn. You have nothing to fear. Due to horrid ventilation, this is not suited for sweaty beings. Dream Material. This non-conductive substance has many uses. I have discovered it can even erase pencil marks. It is a dream material, but the more it is used, the more it crumbles. The same is true of dreams. Justice Alloy. You cannot see it and you cannot touch it, but it, but it is definitely here and there. What, you ask? Whatever this suit is falsified by. That is what I cannot believe. There is a better material than what I am constructed of. Amplified amplifier. Your voice is weak. Yeah, no. It does not carry. No one notices you. If this is true, then this item is for you. Starting today, you are a gym teacher. You will never be ignored again. Professional noise maker. Noisier than a spaceship, this wonderful item will make your miserable life 120% more exciting. The key. I have the key. This shape, I've encountered it somewhere before. No, I must be mistaken. Yes, I am mistaken. Thoughts like these strike all who see the cabalistic form. You can feel its immense power. Okay, one more shell needed there. Sub generator. Rubsy dubsy sudsy blue, rubsy dubsy sudsy woo, sudsy sudsy scrub a doo. The more you rub it, the more it bubbles and foams. Don't worry about its purpose. Just scrub. Get good scrub. Flame of tomorrow. Is this the flame of hope that spawned humanoid civilization? Hokatate needs new energy sources, and this could be a fine candidate. Will machines like me be powered by this someday? Okay, a computer powered by literal fire would actually be pretty neat. Impediment scourge. More shocking than a lightning bolt, faster than a light moat. Able to crush rocks in one bash, this device can clear away any impediment in one fell swoop. Time capsule. This shiny pod was found buried like a time capsule. Holding image data of unknown origin. Is it possible that you fathom the data's import? This riddle will entrance all puzzle lovers. Lip service. What is wrong with the delicate dance of beautification, flattery and flirtation? What, I ask? If it makes life more fun, keep it up. 
Come on, buy yours today. Mirrored stage. Cumbrian, wind or typhoon, this stage will always support the hidden singer deep within your soul. This is a lovely instant dance stage. How about taking one on tour with you, Star of Rock? Bearmoth Jaw. Is this part of a previously unknown giant life form? What might the entire beast look like? Let your imagination run wild and create the largest of all living beings in your head. Okay, any others to read out? Oh, Rubber Ugly. The fir Rubber Ugly. The first time I laid eyes on this hideous treasure, I thought it was a giant aquatic monster. It took me ter several terror-filled seconds to realise it's just an ugly statue. What a relief. I was ready to run all the way back to Hokotate. Okay, and that's everything. So yeah, uh, I still need to get that one last treasure in Glutton's Kitchen. And then we can start taking on the Wistful Wilds. Dungeons. Hey, Pink Fawn, how's it going? I'm afraid you just caught me as I was finishing streaming, but how are you doing? Any new cosplays in progress? I still need to get back to the horns. Willow, thanks for the stream. Hope I get that nap before Lance tomorrow. So do I. Oh, you've got to get to work. Fair enough. Pink Fawn, you're doing okay? Had one arrive yesterday that doesn't fit right? Ah, oh, that sucks. I got some new body paint, but um, I had a bit of a uh, pavalava getting the package. Basically, yeah, the um, driver said they, uh, no one was in, but I don't think they actually, I think they must have uh, gone to the wrong address. Because I basically got a um, text like halfway through the um, hour of window I was given. <coughs> saying no one was in uh, so I um, found and emailed their customer support and I was basically uh, asked if um, for a, if um, basically I was asked for a description of a building that's nearby but not the one I live in and asked if that was correct uh, but yeah luckily it got delivered today and the nearest point was uh, just the post office, which was only like 10 minutes away. <coughs> so, yeah, I got my package in the end. And I've got some, uh, well, a new colour to play with. Oh, yeah. Ow. Oh, hang on. I'll switch back to... Uh, The uh, main screen. <coughs> Pardon the coughs. So yeah. Uh, oh yeah. I'll just give uh, Keith another shout out. So yeah. The uh, Lancer campaign begins on his channel. <coughs> tomorrow uh, I'll be playing sort of well Lance is basically a tabletop RPG it sort of splits between sort of like a blades in the dark narrative section and a more sort of a uh, strategy <coughs> heavy um, giant robot mech robot battles which are mm -hmm. sort of like the best bits of a uh, fourth edition d and uh, he's put a ton of uh, effort into planning the campaign so everyone please drop by and um watch it. Uh, my character is basically going to be a sort of a hacker character loosely based on um, mainly on Ed from Cowboy Bebop. So sort of a, an androgynous kind of cheerful uh, person. Like 
it's me, so she's a tra uh, this character's a trans woman. Um, who are just, who's a cosmopolitan, which is basically the term for people who are mostly live their life traveling from planet to planet, which they basically sort of pop up every century or so in a given planet because of the uh, way it's relatively, relatively, bleh, relatively, I cannot word today, <coughs> relativistic travel works. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Nick's basically playing like um, an old sort of soldier, sort of pilot. I think Enfys is playing an Enfys character. So there's going to, they're basically going for a build that involves um, overheating. But yeah, I'm rambling. It's going to be very fun, so drop by if you want, can. Pink Fawn, you're wondering if you can get away of ordering, reordering the next size up though. Uh, can you get a return on it? I mean, obviously I don't know where you ordered it from. I mean, obviously uh, I find when you're ordering a cosplay that's been made, it's usually best to go a size up so you can adjust it yourself if needs be. Oh yeah. So yeah, let's just see who's live. Sorry about the state of my voice, by the way. Nick's uh, doing his uh, Nick attempt, so he's basically streaming like four separate things. Uh, the Bunyip Bun Bun Man's playing Killer Frequency. Mended Pearl is playing Boulder's Gate on a run. And Noah's playing Dead Space. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll go for Old Faithful and Raid Nick. Yeah, I have, between being ill and uh, just uh, generally being tired, I have not got any cosplay stuff done. So I need to get those horns finished and get doing some other stuff. Oh, hey Kiara. Sorry, I'm literally just about to read out. Thanks for the luck though. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, I might check out the uh, New Life is Strange game at some point, although I don't know if I'll stream it because... One, I, you know, I have that sort of warm, fuzzy feeling for Life is Strange in general. And two, heck yeah, actual trans character. Uh, Icky, you need to get your heart broken in private first. Yeah, I was just watching the outside Xbox video on it and uh, it looks like it's going to be, an, you know, it's going to... Life is Strange has its flaws, but I think it's going to get me. But yeah, I'm rambling. The uh, raid's going to go through in a short time. So, yep, yeah, uh, everyone drop by uh, Keith's channel. I think the stream starts at actually around this time tomorrow. So keep an eye out for the alert. The raid's going to go through in five seconds. So, oh, half seven. So, like three quarters of an hour ago. Oh, raid's about to go through, so... Three, two, one, let's go. Oh, and if you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. You're still my favourites. <coughs> and there's a free cough for you as well. <coughs> 